One in every 150 Canadians is living with Crohn's or colitis, and I'm one of them. A disease that inflames the lining of the GI tract and disrupts your body's ability to digest food and absorb nutrition, it acts differently in every body it invades and is still quite a mystery. Here to shed some more light on this disease are Dr. Mark Chandra and Dr. Jyoti Katsukar. Welcome back, guys. Thank <laughs> Thanks, you. Maggie. So I was, as I said, I was diagnosed about four years ago with Crohn's. Um, now, it's different in everybody. I have a couple of friends that have Crohn's as well, and we all have different stories. So exactly what is Crohn's colitis, Dr. Jyoti? So th there are two diseases that um, we'll be talking about today, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis and they both fall under the category of inflammatory bowel disease. In other words, they are diseases that involve the, um, the, the, the bowel, the bowel becomes inflamed, and the, the cause of these diseases is still, it, it's still um, not clearly completely understood, but we understand that it's a combination of genetics and environment and it, the bowel becomes in, inflamed and the immune system is not able to dampen dampen its response mm -hmm. and so the the immune system is essentially um, in in um, overdrive the, the diseases of Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, they're, they're, they're similar in some ways, but in, in other ways they're, they're different. Mm -hmm. So the, the disease that you're suffering from is Crohn's disease. It's the type of inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD. Mm -hmm. You'll often hear the, uh, the abbreviation IBD, inflammatory bowel disease. Crohn's is the one that can cause this inflammation, this, this angering of the gastrointestinal or GI tract anywhere in your body, all the way from the mouth, all the way to the other side. And those are the, that's the classic finding of Crohn's disease. Typically it's the large bowel. Mm -hmm. um, there's two parts of our bowel. There's the, the small intestine and the large intestine, and they perform different functions. And Crohn's disease tends to occur more in the late part of the small bowel or the large bowel, but it can be anywhere differentiated with ulcerative colitis, which as the name suggests, specifically causes inflammation in the colon, mm -hmm. hence the word colitis, Col colon being another word for the large bowel. Now, yeah. I know that um, I probably had symptoms for years, but only really realized something's off and went to my doctor and was later diagnosed with Crohn's. And I've learned since then to listen to my body mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. What are some of the symptoms that, you know, somebody watching is thinking maybe I... Yeah. And, and again, Crohn's and colitis are not big names that we hear about a lot. So you might not even know that these things Ex exactly. exist. Exactly. So what are some symptoms that uh, people at home can watch out for to kind of figure out if they have it or not? Right. So typical symptoms would be abdominal pain, mm -hmm. cramping, diarrhea, bloody diarrhea in um, the case of ulcerative colitis often. You might also experience um, loss of appetite, anemia, fatigue, fever. Weight loss even. Mm -hmm. And weight loss. So One of the classic findings of ulcerative colitis is that false urge. Mm -hmm. um, more typical in ulcerative colitis than Crohn's, it's that need, an urgent need, extremely urgent need to go and use the bathroom. And then when you get there, you find that you either can't go to the bathroom or your, 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 your bowel movement is much smaller than you thought it would be. One, yeah. one other um, illness that often gets confused with IBD or inflammatory yes. bowel disease is um, no, irritable, uh, bowel, irritable so. bowel. And I was that's say, there's common, two, yeah, there's IBD and then a, there's IBS. BS, and they're very different. Yeah. So yeah. With, with the irritable bowel syndrome, you can also get, there's a crossover on the symptoms. Often you can get the abdominal pain, the bloating, the diarrhea. Often with irritable bowel, it, there's often, uh, you'll, you'll swing between diarrhea and constipation. Mm. And if you actually look at the bowel in irritable bowel syndrome, you don't see those inflammatory changes that you see with, with the inflammatory bowel disease. Yeah, IBS has much more to do with bowel function. And we're thinking in, in many ways, the way that the, the brain interprets mm -hmm. cues that come from your gastrointestinal tract. 
So those are the symptoms, really. Right. Yep. There's also lingo of triggers or flare-ups, and that's another thing that, you know, once you enter the world of Crohn's and colitis that you have to be aware of, and maybe even if you don't even know, there are certain foods that might cause certain flare-ups, certain uh, feelings in your body. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's important to talk about. So certainly if you get any of those symptoms um, and they're persisting mm -hmm. and you're worried, there's something that you have to do and you have to go see your doctor, mm -hmm. all right, your family doctor. And your family doctor will do a number of things. Uh, first of all, he or she will ask you how long this has been going on, exactly what the symptoms are, and they're going to start doing stuff like blood work. They're going to probably do x-rays, perhaps CAT scans, and in all likelihood, if they're concerned enough, send you off for um, special scopes called endoscopies, where they'll uh, look through one end or the other, um, take a good look at the bowel, and probably end up doing some biopsies. And that's, for the most part, how the disease is diagnosed. And it, by that stage, you're in the hands of either a general surgeon or a gastroenterologist or somebody that specializes in this. But it's interesting what you said about food yeah. you know, and causes, you know? So and the the literature would say that there really is not that that food and even stress are not causes or, or will not cause the disease to develop but once you uh, might be in a flare-up for instance that that there are certain foods that you would want to avoid because they're going to make the flare-ups worse yeah that's something that we try and impress upon our patients that the, what, once you have the, di the disease and you're diagnosed and you're living with it, to try and free yourself of a couple of things. Uh, one of them is self-blame. Mm -hmm. You know, that it is something that you did mm -hmm. that, that brought this disease on. That this doesn't appear to be the case. And secondly, that certain elements of diet can actually cause the flare-up to happen. Mm -hmm. And like Jyoti was saying, we don't really have evidence of that that foods will cause the flare-up itself. Once you have the flare-up, it, it's a different story. At that point in time, you're getting now, individuals find that certain trigger foods mm -hmm. can make the flare-up better or worse. Mm -hmm. And they'll have certain foods that make flare-ups worse and other so-called safe foods that tend to relieve the, the symptoms of the flare-ups. Flare-ups being characterized by worsening of those symptoms that we told you. And about. maybe Maggie, you can share your own. Yeah. I've actually had it happen where certain foods have triggered. Interesting. Um, yep. So I'll be fine and I know as soon as I eat a certain thing or if I eat right. spicy foods, I know I'm gonna have a flare-up. And, and they can be quite scary, the feeling that you have. Mm -hmm. I remember when I first was diagnosed, you talked about just feelings that you go through. Yeah. I remember feeling isolated because I just didn't know how to handle this and just didn't know what to eat and felt really afraid. So I lost a lot of weight because yes. I just was so confused as to what to eat. So there are a lot of, there is a lot of confusion when and you first you, are diagnosed. You've touched on a lot of important things there. The, the confusion and the isolation that occurs, and it just makes me think of the fact that more and more now, we're diagnosing these diseases, specifically Crohn's disease, in kids. Mm, yes, I've heard this. I, over the, I, I can't remember the statistics. But I, I think it's, it's since 1995, the number of children under the, the age of 10, the, the number of diagnoses of, of Crohn's has doubled. Wow. And, so, and wow. you can it's imagine concerning. how hard that would be on a, a little boy or a girl because now they have a disease that has to do with going to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And it's hard enough to talk about going to the bathroom, much less having trouble with it. Yeah. You know, so the amount of emotional burden on those kids and their caregivers, their mom and dad, you know, combined with wondering, did they do anything to cause this disease? It has quite an emotional burden. And one of the things that we do as family doctors is try to liberate people from that. So th definitely flare-ups is one of them. But it is, and the, those symptoms that we talked about are, of course, uh, the mainstay of symptoms, but also, unfortunately, in the hospital setting, when we look after people with Crohn's, they've moved beyond their symptoms, mm. and they're now into the complications of the disease. Yeah. Yep. We only have a few minutes left, but yep. what are some maybe takeaway notes that, yep. you know, if someone's watching that's thinking maybe I do have Crohn's, what can, what would you advise that they do? What would be the next step, Dr. Jyoti? Well, I think, I think you need to get in to see your, your primary care provider it's it's too difficult to make a diagnosis on your own so by going in seeing your family doctor they can they can do some of these basic tests the blood work the x-rays perhaps a cat scan and then 
likely refer you on to a gastroenterologist for a, a scope mm -hmm. because really to make the diagnosis you need um, direct visualization and biopsies done. And one thing I'd like to people to know mm -hmm. is that yes, see your doctor, but be aware of the fact that even though we don't have cures for these diseases, there's treatments. Yeah. And with the treatments and the technology that we have available right now, uh, be it medicine, surgery, or, or, or whatever, you can lead a normal, productive life with Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. So by no means, is it life-changing? Yes, okay? But does it have to be catastrophically detrimental to your hopes and dreams? And no, yeah. no, not at all. You know? well so it's, uh, there's a lot of hope and there's societies out there to help you through it along with your family doctor. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say and there's a lot of information. I know the Crohn's yeah. Colitis Foundation is a great Absolutely. site yeah. where you can find more information. Thank you both, oh. our doctors. Thank you, Maggie. For the check-in today. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime. We're here. Thank you again.